and, and it's it's really hard to find people who are loyal and want to live this life and give their life to this industry. <laughs> Frank, this is something I have to ask you, What's and that? I ask everybody, buddy. What? What's your favorite rubber band? Jesus Christ, I don't remember now. <laughs> I don't have any used rubber bands in such a long time. What are they, number nines? Is that what they were, or number sevens? I don't remember Number anymore. tens. Number tens, tens, that's what it was. Number tens, yeah. Number yeah. tens. It's been a long time, man, since I used them, so yeah, number tens, that's what it was. Uh, and uh, and I, oh, no more than two. No more than two. No more than two. Were you ever sponsored with rubber bands? I was not. <laughs> was not. Shit, sponsorships weren't even a thing up until like the last uh, eight years. Yeah, it's become a shit show. Yeah. Yep. I mean, for me, and just so most people know, is it's never been a business thing. It's always been a rewards thing. Mm -hmm. Two people I've known that have been using buying and using my product because they want to use it. It's always been a reward. Rather than, I, I, I get new artists coming up to me all the time. People have never touched my shit and be like, hey, how do I get a sponsorship? I'm like, you don't. That doesn't <laughs> work like that, man. No, you it's know. a loyalty thing, man. It's it's, it's about friendships. <laughs> uh, we've known each other for... For 10 know, years, man. At least 10. At least 10. Probably close to 12. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, no. I mean, as long as I've been back on the East Coast, really. Yeah, I never really left the East Coast. Yeah, I did. I, I went, I I went out. I, I mean, Pittsburgh is what? That's not technically the Midwest. I mean, it's getting close, but it's not there. Mm -hmm. You know? Now, you do some shows, but uh, you're going to start doing a few more shows? or? Yeah, I mean, on average, I do about 12 shows a year. Um, this year, I kind of slowed back because me and the wife got a house and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I mean, this show, this year, I did. Eight. This year, it'll end up being eight by my by the end of this year. Wow, I didn't think you did that many. Yeah, man. And then last year, I did fourteen. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, next year I'd like to do a little bit more, kind of get back on the road, you know. Um, Put your name out there a little farther. Yeah, man. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. So, get to see get to see all my tattoo family, I should say. Yeah. You know, I mean. And I've not seen everybody the last six months like I was. It was, you know, it was kind of nice to get go go to Milwaukee and see everybody. Yeah, that was so. a good show. That's a always fun a show. fun town, man. That's a fun show. I like that show. I always yeah. refer to the shows as my working vacations. Some yeah. of them, yeah, definitely. Yeah. De definitely some of them working vacations. I mean, look, we got to go to the Harley Museum. That was cool. That was fun. That I, was did, I did fun. enjoy that, man, especially with the... With you, Lunchbox, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Lunchbox is... Yeah. He's a, Eric was he, there, too, but he doesn't count. <laughs> oh, that kid. That he, poor kid, man. He, I'm going to break him one of dude, these Dude, that days. kid eats so much shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good kid. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, it was, it's fun. It, it's been a lot of fun. And, um, you know, and the traveling thing, man, is always a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, it's too. It, it, it's, it's a lot of work, especially having young kids at home still, too. Yeah. You know? So, but uh, I definitely want to get, I, I'd like to do at least 12 shows a year. So that's kind of my, my goal. So that's how yeah. we keep our healthy relationship is like, I'm away, from, I'm out of the house so much that by the time I come home, my wife actually wants me there. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Brandy actually misses me. And it's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm home for a week and she's like, you got to go again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, you're getting on my nerves. Yeah. I hear that all the time. Okay, Frank, we know you like to do a lot of dark stuff, you know, um, are there tattoos you won't do or refuse to do? Not really. I mean, I don't really do anything small anymore. It's it's rare for me to do something. But I mean, is there any subject matters or any, any things that you just, you know, tell the customers no, you know, do you, do you, do no, you, you, no, no, no gang stuff. I don't do anything like that. Um, no, no, no colors at all okay. for nothing. I mean, you've worked yourself into a position to pick and choose what you do. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, I, I, I like to keep myself on my toes, so I kind of do a bunch of different stuff. Okay. You know, I, I don't just do the horror of black and gray. I can do traditional. I can do realism color. I can do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It just depends what, you know. What comes in the door? Yeah, kind of. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I do pick and choose what I want. Like, some people don't want to wait 
for as long as I'm booked up sometimes. Right. So, so I mean. Exactly. That, that, How booked up are you? I'm booked up in, um, I have about a seven month wait. Okay. You know? So you don't generally do any walkings at all. Unless you have a cancellation. Uh, uh, unless I have a cancellation, but then this year uh, we started a, a, a walk-in Wednesday at my shop, and I do walk-ins on Wednesdays, and I'll do no longer, no long, no longer than a three-hour session with somebody okay. on Wednesday. So somebody can get a tattoo from you without waiting seven months if they show up on Wednesday, right? Which and is it, today, and it's first come first serve, and it's today. <laughs> but it's kind of cool. Today's kind of a chill day, so nice. I, you know, get to hang out with you, and you know, kind of do this whole thing, and. How is the walk-in Wednesdays working out? I mean, like business-wise, is it? Is it, it, is it, it, it? It was working out great. I haven't advertised for it for a little while, mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna start advertising for it again. But it was working out great. There was usually a line at the door every morning for people wow. to come in and sign. And, and my day was pretty much planned every day. You know, every Wednesday right off the rip. And it was all three-hour sessions, man. Boom, boom, boom. Cool. And you have there's four of you tattooing here now, right? Yes. And then you have a space for guest spots guest also. Spots. Correct. Nice. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I've been talking to Chris a little bit later because yes. he's in town for the week. Yeah. Now. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Mr. Mack will be with us. He'll be with you guys in a little bit, right? Yeah. So that'll be good. I'd say come and see him, but this won't even go live for another month. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Not much we can do about that. No, no, that'd be good. Maybe, maybe come see him next time he's here. Next time. He's going to be a regular. If he doesn't screw it up. We'll see what happens. <laughs> he's, you know, he, he, you know, he tends to get to be a little wild at times, you know. Yeah, he says it's hard to subdue that boy. <laughs> <laughs> so these days, Frank, there's been a, like a lot of controversy out there about like deposits, and then, and you know, some people want to leave a little deposit, some people want a huge deposit, some people, some people walk away from deposits. Like, what's your policy here? How do you handle it? Um, I, I, I take a hundred fifty dollar deposit. Okay. Um. But the, that money is put towards the tattoo uh, at the day of. Um, and if the person needs to move or reschedule their appointment, they need to give me a 48-hour notice okay. to be able to retain that $150. Otherwise, it's not refundable. Un, un, exactly. Because you've already done the artwork. You exactly. Time into the it, research. Exactly. Time, research, everything. Held them up. I mean, if they call me, they'll, they'll call no show. It's. I mean, I am busy, but it's still hard to get somebody in that day of. Oh, absolutely. You know, so. Now... 150 is a decent sized deposit. Yeah. Do you have people walk away from that or no? It's rare. It's, I, it's rare for people to blow me off for an appointment in general. Because, I mean, they make an appointment, wait seven months for an appointment, and then be like, oh, shit. True. You know? Now, are they reluctant to put down a large deposit? Most people, no. Most people, no. You price based on the time you put into the tattoo. You don't generally set a price... This is going to be a twelve hundred dollar tattoo, a seven hundred dollar tattoo, a four hundred dollar. Ah, uh, no, I used to go by the hour. Okay. I used to go by the hour. It works out what the fairest for everybody, yeah, but yeah, you know, a lot of people want to know up front. Yeah, you know, because because I, I mean, all right, I'll I'll, I'll do a full, I'll, I'll do a, a price rate for a full day, mm -hmm. but that's my price. Right. So you you know you know so like if you're going to put that one hundred and fifty dollars down for that price, cool. If you want to use it and move it to another appointment, cool. Whatever you want to do, I'm pretty flexible, you know. You, you know, um, as long as they give you 48 hours to get somebody else in. Right, exactly. That's a good policy, man. It's just, so. it, it's just funny because I hear other people that have customers that complain about giving, you know, a, a 30, 40, 50 dollar deposit, and I'm like, well, those are the clients you may not want to begin with. I, I had started it at 50 dollars, but that was years ago, and then it was a hundred dollars. And then once I hit over the six month mark of being booked up, I mean, I could be booked up a year in advance if I allowed it, but I don't allow it because how can you even plan your life? Right. Yeah. You, you, you know. Um, but once I hit a certain amount, that's when I was like, man, I gotta go higher on my deposits too because that kind of, you know, if the person don't want to pay what you want for a deposit, obviously they're not gonna pay what you want for your tattoos as well. That is true. You're going to have a hard time. And it's easier you, for somebody to walk away from 50 than it is 150. Right. Cool. That's a good plan. Okay, Frank, another topic out there these days with what's going on in business is uh, uh, supply companies and professionalism. I mean, how important is it to you that your supplier only sells to professionals? I mean, I'd be kind of a hypocrite because when I was underground, I got sold to. But... 
We and, evolved. And, 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 right. In the years of how tattooing has become, in the years since then, um, I think it's huge now that you have to have the professionalism. Um, like, you know, Needle Jig, you know, only sells to professionals. And I think that's huge now. Um, because everybody and their brother, if they can draw on paper, they think they can be a tattooer. You can't. It takes years and years and years of work and practice. I, I just, it, it kind of sucks when people just sell to people that want to be tattooers. You saying you can't learn to be a surgeon on YouTube? <laughs> Come on, let's take your kidney out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two, I'm game. So, I mean, I, I, I could really go off about that because I mean, I, I see so many bad tattoos come in. For, where'd you get it? Ah, oh, at a tattoo party. Ugh. You know, so it's like, I mean. Oh, you did tattoo parties back in the day. We all did. We all did, but it was different. It was. It was. It, it, now, it was, now, it was, there, there's a level of professionalism now. You know, you know, and and, and uh, to tattooing be, has become legitimized. Where back in the day, it was dark and seedy it, and it, hidden. Exactly, it was in that really gray area for so many, so many years. You know, I mean, bikers and sailors and all that. Everybody associated it to right. that. You know, and we've and, worked so hard to get where we're at. Yep. We don't want to see the business go backwards. Is exactly, what it is. exactly. And I, I agree. agree man. I, I agree, one hundred percent too, man. Okay, Frank. Now let's talk cartridges. Uh, you mentioned earlier, you know, your switch from cartridges or switch to cartridges from needles on bars. How was that for you? Uh, were you reluctant? Were you were you uh, enthusiastic? Was it difficult? What? Give us your your take on that. Well, all right. It kind of when, when when I went from coil to rotary, it was needle on bar, and now the only issue with rotary. And needle on bar was that rotary was hitting harder. You know, it hit really hard. You had to be, you could damage the skin really quick and easy. Um, but when it, when the cartridge came out, um, it kind of gave a little bit of give. Right. You, you, you know, like when, when when you were running a coil machine and you'd hit the skin, it would, the coil always backed off a little bit. And now with the cartridge, it kind of does the same thing. And uh, now with the new membrane, the Dynasty cartridge, that one's even better because it's it's got a it hits a little harder and it doesn't it doesn't wear out either. You know, it, it, it runs for a very long time and no, there's no blowbacks, no nothing. It's it's awesome. So the return mechanism is just more consistent than the the O-ring styles that are right in the legacies. Correct. Okay. Yeah, cause, cause, yeah, because I mean I love the legacies. They're the same needles. You know, it it it, it, it that was you know they're a great needle. Um, it's just uh, over time the O-ring wore out and it didn't hit as hard as it once as it did over You like the way the needles react exactly. in, the, in the membrane cartridge preferred to the Exactly, O-ring. exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they, they run awesome. I mean both needles are great. They're the same needles, you know um, it, in uh, I still use both um, It's just the way they hit they hit differently and they wear differently and they're awesome dudes, you know, and uh, it, it's um, the way cartridge needles, they've revolutionized tattooing, and you know. Now, did they affect your style of tattooing? Did they, or not style of tattooing, your your technique? Did was, was there? What was your learning curve there? Oh man, it definitely was a learning curve. It it was because they, they the, the 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 way they hit, um, even the way the difference between the legacy and to the dynasty, they hit a little differently. Um, uh, it, 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 well, mechanically, they're a little different. Yeah, 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 yeah they are. And, and, and um, so, yeah, it, all all the all the growths in the industry have, have changed my skill level. I would right. say, right? And, and, and uh, changed the tattooing wise. Like we were talking about the, the pepper shading with the coil machines. That no longer could happen, really, with 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 rotary machines because you get this weird skippy look, you know, and and, and then you kind of went to the legacy and you're kind of able to get that pepper shading a little bit more because it kind of loosened up the shading a little bit, you know. I got a friend though that's making these nice rotaries, which is a, it's a, it's a glide system, sort of like the Neopat style. Okay. Um, that are running a port of scat motor that will run really slow. 
Ooh. So now it can get that peppery. You really? Can, you can do that. So yeah, yeah. I had a good, mm. about, good buddy of mine, Bob Gibson, used to tattoo oh. for me in Arizona. Yeah, you told me about that. Um, yeah. But anyways, uh, it's the one of the few rotary machines I've seen that actually still has a strong enough hit at a low speed. Your eccentric, your eccentric machine runs really low too. Yeah, I, 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 you, I can get. I do that. I do that um, when I do like mandala work. That's what I use for my stippling and stuff. Okay. Yeah, really I've got a lot low. of dot and line guys that use those. That's, yep. that's, that's true. Cool. But I mean, it, it can be done with a rotary, but there's just not that many out there that do it efficiently. No, the Valhalla. I'm still getting used to that one. That one's definitely. Um, that machine is. It could do a multiple of different things, and it took me a little while to get used to it because there's so many. Uh, variable variables to get it set the way I like to run my machines, right. you know. But uh, that that machine's awesome, man. That's like one of the first pen machines that I've really liked. So. Nice. Well, Dan will appreciate that. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, Frank. While we're on the topic of cartridges, are there any tips you have for people that are going to be moving into cartridges from needle bars? Yeah. Um, Definitely still check your needles because just because that they're coming pre-sterilized and pre-packaged in these cool little cartridges doesn't mean that there still isn't a hiccup in the needles somewhere. Other than that, it, it they you're gonna it's gonna take a little bit of playing around to find what works the best for you. So Frank, you still loop your needles? I do. Excellent. I do. I check them all the time. I'm shocked how many people I see that just pop things open. I have machine, to, man. You, know. you get a hooked needle or something that, you know, you never ever know, man. It, it, it doesn't, doesn't happen, happen often. No. But no, you never know. It's a nightmare when it does. Exactly, man. I mean, I've ac I've seen needles accidentally be backwards, too. You know, I mean, shit happens, man. You know? I tell people all the time, I, uh, I can't make millions of anything without having the occasional screw up. Yeah, exactly. All right, Frank, my last conversation was with Hector Cedillo a couple weeks ago in Worcester here. Uh, you know Hector well, right? Yeah, I do know Hector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think of Hector? He's a good dude. Man. No, man, you can be honest with us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he sucks. No, man. <laughs> Hector, you're awesome, man. Um, I worked with Hector at a Boston show two or three years ago now, and Cesar Perez, a bunch of us, man, and it was a lot of fun, and a uh, great artist. Uh, Learned a lot, actually. Learned a lot with him just hanging He's out with him. very family. intelligent. Dude, super smart guy, super intelligent, um, super talented artist, man. Mm -hmm. And a great human being. Yes. Like, like just a good yeah. fucking person. Yeah, I, I heard that he's open. He is, is his new shop already open? Yeah, just opened uh, this last week. Awesome, I think. Awesome, yeah. yeah. I'd like to go check it out. It's up in Worcester now, right? Yep. I'm going to... I plan on shooting in there one of these days and because we did our interview in a hotel room. Which wasn't <laughs> as beautiful as where we are here in your place. So I'll probably do a little follow-up in his shop here somewhere cool. in the future. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I'd like to go up there and see him. I haven't seen him in a while, but yeah, he's definitely a cool guy. Frank, we're going back to coils versus rotaries, pros, cons, things like that. Do you find that rotaries hurt more than coil machines or less? We, we're, we're trying to talk about you know myths, debunking myths, whether they're truths. Things like that. What's your what's your prerogative? I, I, I think a direct drive with needle on bar definitely hurts more. Um, there's no give. Like you know, like I was saying earlier, like there's give with like a coil machine and needle on bar. When that needle hits the skin it gives a little bit because of the springs and all, right. everything on a on a coil and when it's a rotary, there's no give. And then when uh, when cartridges came out you got that give a little bit back and that's right. kinda changed the game a little bit again. So now you're thinking rotaries run closer to what a coil runs like? No. If a coil ran correctly? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, a good coil runs great. I yeah. mean, there's no denying that, man. Absolutely. I, I, I mean, that's tattooing, you know. It's I just mean, keeping them in tune. That is something right. and, that and, and, and a lot most of, people can't do. They no. don't, you know, they don't understand the technology. Yeah, and and, and, and the thing is, it's simple technology. Um, it, it just, I, I think a lot of people now just don't take the time to want to learn about their history and about the traditional ways True. that we used to tattoo. Well, I think of it like this, too. Artists are more creative and a tattoo machine is more mechanical. It's, it's a different... 
you can't ask your auto mechanic to paint you a beautiful picture. So why are you going to ask your, yeah, your, your the guy who paints your portraits to? I guess you, you know tune a machine. You're, I mean, you're, you're right. Some people can handle both, but most can't. Yeah, that's true. I guess. I mean, I, you know, I, I like to know how things work, and I take shit apart and rumble my own shit. You know, Me but too. but um, but yeah. No, back back to the uh, the the uh, needle on bar with rotaries and stuff. I definitely think it hurts more when it's just a needle on bar with rotaries, but. With the with the cartridge and uh, the cartridge grips and all that now is definitely relieved uh, alleviated some of the pain a little bit. Well, Frank, getting into tattooing now is way different than back when we got involved, and when we got involved was way different than you know our forefathers before us or whatever. What kind of advice would you have for an artist that has an interest in getting into tattooing? these days I, I i i haven't i haven't really taken an apprentice on in a while and the last time i took an apprentice on she kind of jumped ship on me and and it's it's really hard to find people who are loyal and want to live this life and give their life to this industry give it all it, you know and that's pretty much what it needs to be man and and it's and, and if it, it, half ass no ex i was just gonna say that uh, you can't you can't half-ass this, man. Because if you half-ass it, you're just going to be another scratcher. And, and I I've worked really hard to get to where I'm at in my life, and I've had a lot of great artists work for me, and I have a lot of great artists that are working for me now that have helped push my business. And I've had great friends like you that help push things in that. And um, I just think it just takes a lot of work and dedication to become a good tattooer now. Um, and try not to skimp on, if you are going to take a tattoo or on, just don't do it because she's cute or because uh, you think that this guy's okay. You got to take these people on now because there's so many people out there now that think that they're tattooers. We already brushed on that. And uh, you just got to take it to heart, man. Well, you know? I've been saying for a long time, at least nine out of every ten people that are tattooing shouldn't. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. But I mean, they're just in it for the wrong reasons. So, yeah. Yep. I I, I agree, one hundred and ten percent. Hey man, it's always a pleasure. I mean, we did this last week off camera. We're gonna do it again this weekend off camera. Yep. But I I really appreciate you, you know, taking the time out. Uh, I love you, you, man. Be down here, man. I love you Fuck too. Yeah, it was it was a good time, man. Thanks for having me. Always is. Thanks for coming to my shop. Cool man. Peace out, guys. <laughs> Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> if, if you're liking what you're seeing, please subscribe and come check us out more often.